Lady Charmaine, and my guest today is an actor who starred in movies like Note to Self, Man in 3B, Perfect Combination, and The Diary of a Mad Black Woman. And he's here today to talk about his new Bounce TV drama, Sinners and Saints, and his brand new novel that's in stores everywhere. Help me welcome Mr. Christian Keys to the show. Welcome. Thank you for having me again. Good. It's always a pleasure having you on the show. Because even the last time I saw you was a couple years ago when I visited one church when I was down in L.A. So I just want to let everybody know, yes, y'all, Christian, do go to church. Very handsome, brother. It was in the house of the Lord. So praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You know, Christian, I was watching a red carpet interview with you and a host, and she asked you what nationality you were because so many women, I guess, was trying to figure out what nationality you were. And you say you were mm -hmm. black French and Indian. So are you American Indian or East Indian? I, I never knew that. Yeah, and I'm not sure. Uh, it's, it's American Indian, um, but I, I don't know what tribe. I don't know. My mother was adopted just like I was, so it's kind of difficult to trace that lineage. But what I'm going to do is get the, the DNA swab, and so that way I can, I can find out exactly what tribes and, you know, where I get certain characteristics from, where my son gets certain characteristics from, and things of that nature. You know what? You know, if you can go on Finding Your Roots, that would be so great for you. The TV show Finding Your Roots. Yeah. I think that would be great because you know how he pinpoints and identifies. That would be fantastic because you have a very good mix. When I heard you say black, uh, Indian, and French, but you know, sometimes not too many mixes mix up too well, but I think you got the best of all <laughs> the batches. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. You're welcome. Then, Kristen, you've been working consistently in this industry. You know, you've been in so many movies now. What is your key to continuing to get consistent work? Just trying to grow and get better between each one. You, I, I feel like I don't ever want to stay on the same level as an actor. And as long as I continue to grow, continue to take it more seriously and continue to work at it. I stay in class, so I keep learning and fine-tuning my process, and it allows me to be more fearless and more honest with these characters, and that, therefore, you know, allows people to, to uh, want me to work with them, and they keep tracking me down for great projects. So, And it's, it's been a blessing. So I've been able to work with some amazing people, thankfully. So that's good. And you're in a brand new series called Sinners and Saints coming on Bounce this Sunday. Tell us about the, the drama series and also the role that you play. Well, it's, it's different. Um, Saints and Sinners, um, it's, it's a very, it's, it's like if you took the show Scandal Up and set it inside of a church. <laughs> There's a lot going on. You, know, you have the, the relationships and the interaction between the people in the church, the members of the church, the staff, the pastor, the family at the church, and then also how it ties into different politicians in the area, some of the unsavory characters and loan sharks <laughs> in the area and in, in the neighborhood, and, and things that you would never guess that the church is tied into, is tied into, and it's crazy, but it's, it's interesting, it's intelligent, it's, it's witty, um, it's a little sexy, you know, it's, it's surprising and I'm, I'm blessed to be a part of it i would watch it if i wasn't on it put it like that it's, it's a really cool show now are you playing one of those sexy roles since you said it's a little sexy uh, uh <laughs> well me i am um, my character levi i play levi on saints and sinners and and my character is part center and part saint oh, so okay <laughs> definitely um you know i have good intentions and a good heart but you know, I've done some, some bad things. I've made some mistakes in the past. And, you know, they, they, they're catching up with my character. Mm. And, you know, that's kind of where I am. And I'm trying to make amends and make right and, and get some redemption for myself. Okay. And, you know, I take two steps forward and three steps back sometimes. And it's, it's a lot going on with my character. So, it's, it's, you know, and then I got an old love interest and I'm going through a divorce. And my character's got a, my character's got a daughter. And, yeah, there's just a lot of, of, of great drama taking place. So I'm, I'm excited for everyone to see it, and I was equally excited to even be a part of it. So so you have that real war of the flesh going on there. In the yes, definitely. <laughs> that, that, definitely. That's what it sounds the, like. <laughs> the, the struggle to, you know, behave, to be good, to do what, what I'm supposed to do, and at the same time, the fact that you know my character is still human mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. 
So the epitome of the struggle is real, y'all. It is what we going to yeah. say on the show. The struggle is real. How did you land the role? Actually, the, um, they reached out, um, Miss Mia Daniels. And, and, you know, I've been a fan of her projects and, and her work and the things that she's cast for a long time. She reached out and, you know, um, requested that I come in and read for a couple of the parts. And I did. I mean, you know, when, when Leah wants you to come in and read, you you know, you not only do you go read, you go kill it. And so that was my thing. I was like, okay, well, if you, if you don't let me in the room, I'm going to do some work. I know, so that's right. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm not just going to come in and read. I'm going to go in and read. So I, I went and I prepped, I prepped the, the, both characters very well. And I felt, and I had a real good take on both characters. And at that point, it was just a matter of, you know, what they were looking for. But, you know, I could kind of tell in the room that, you know, I was I was in for sure for one of them. Mm-hmm. So, and that's a good feeling. So, yeah, it, it, you know, it, it, I'm never I'm not too big to go in and audition for certain things. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I I look at it as an opportunity to book the room and to make some fans and supporters in that room once I'm there. So that's how I got it. So you slayed it, and we're going to get a chance to see you on Sunday. And I want to know, tell us about the other cast members, because I know even Beyonce's stepdaddy is even in this uh, drama series, right? Ha, ah, you said stepdaddy, not stepdaddy. Wait. Um, wow. Um, yes, Mr. Richard Lawson. I yes. am not calling him that other title that you just called it. Mr. Richard Lawson, who is a, 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 a phenomenal actor. Yes, he um, is. He's in it. Ms. Vanessa Del Calloway, love her to pieces. She's mm-hmm. amazing. Um, who else? Clifton Powell. I call him Uncle Cliff because he's, you know, he's played my father in the movie. He's played my basketball coach in the movie. Now he's like the local uh, loan shark slash <laughs> uh, uh, villain. So, you know, it's but I love working with him. He's just a genuine spirit, and he's got chops for days, so. And, and if you're in the scene with Cliff, you know, you got to pack a lunch because he's not going to play with it. Mm. So he's in there. Keith Robinson's in there. Um, who else? Kelly Price with her amazing self. She's a beautiful spirit, and she can sing her face off clearly. Um, and Miss Erica Campbell from Mary Mary, you know, she pops up in an episode or two. Um, who else is in there? David Banner, you know, he plays one of the pastors in the series, and he kills it. You know, he's, he's a beast. So just... There's, there's a lot of uh, Jasmine Burke, you know, she's doing her thing. J.D. Williams from The Wire. You know, a lot of The Wire fans are going to remember him and love him from that as well as a bunch of other projects. So there's a lot of people. Uh, Ms. Gloria Rubin, she, she, you know, she works consistently mm-hmm. and she's a, a very fine actor. So um, all across the board, I think they stacked the deck and the ensemble cast, the collection of, of different actors. I believe the viewers are going to love it and just want more. So for you, out of all the roles and characters that you've played, how different is this role from all the other characters you've played? Just that he has, just out the gate, he has dirt on his hands, which I like. You know, a lot of times I get cast in the polished, um, you know, his, his pretty boy, whatever, you know, love interest, and that's about as deep as the character is. And this guy has so many different things going on. You know, as Levi, I have a daughter, you know, I'm going through a divorce. I go back home to try to, you know, pull my life back together. And I still have feelings for my high school sweetheart who's still there. She also happens to be the pastor's daughter. Mm. So I interact and I have to see her every day. So that, you know, eventually there's the possibility that that old flame might turn into a full-on, full-on fire. And, you know, there's that and and then the business side of it, you know, trying to help the church with their money problems and trying to stay out of prison because my character did some shady stuff back (laughs) on Wall Street. Okay. Um, It's it's just some shady stuff back on Wall Street. And, um, but yeah, it's it's a lot going on. So I love that element of it simply because of that. You know, you kind of remind me of your, your character. I wonder, did they get that character from um, Phaedra Parks' husband? It kind of has some similarities, except the prison part of it. Both handsome, doing some shady stuff, you know, white-collar crime. You know, got a few things going on. Both got kids. It's just kind of some similarities. I, I can't wait to see it. So I will also want to talk to you that you are now a published author. So tell us about your new novel. 
My new novel is called Dr. Feelgood. It <laughs> just came out a couple weeks ago. Okay. It's, it, and it's everywhere that books are sold, everywhere. Target, Walmart, Barnes & Noble, Books a Million, Borders. Uh, those are, you know, that's in the stores. You can walk in and buy it. And then if you want to order it online, just have to ship it to you. Amazon, Google, any of those places, or get it for your iTunes or your Kindle. But it's, it's a romantic comedy. It's a really witty, funny, sexy, moving story about a therapist. And, you know, the main guy in it, um, he's coming off of a failed engagement. You know, so he kind of pours himself into his work. He messes around and hires his best friend from college, who's also a therapist. But, you know, his best friend, Dr. Mark Collins, he's about as responsible as a bag of hair. And, you know, he's trying to sleep with the hot patients. He's updating his Instagram during session when he should be trying to help these people sort out their lives. And so between policing him and you know, eventually getting back into the dating game and meeting somebody and eventually falling for her and the ex tries to come back and um, dealing with all the crazy patients and their antics and their problems. It's a really funny, moving story. Like, you know, I've had people tell me they laughed, cried, and got angry and was happy and was shouting and they were writing down notes, you know, life lessons from the story. And a lot of people said that they couldn't put it down, you know, that they end up reading it in like three or four days. And I love that because that, you know, you want them to not be able to put it down. I want you to have to mm-hmm. sneak at work and try to get a chapter in or something. And that's what's been happening. So it's been received very well. And I'm grateful. So it sounds like it's a really good page turner. So why did you decide to do like a romantic comedy? Did you always have a desire to become an author? Well, I've been writing since I was 12. Really? I just, I have a stack of scripts and I was talking with my publisher, Carl Weber, who has, 18 New York Times bestsellers of his own, and I, I asked him to read one of the scripts and see if he thought it had the substance for me to be able to build it out into a novel. And he, he liked it. it, and it ended up being my first novel that came out last year. It was called Ladies' Night, and it was like an urban Magic Mike. This was before they did Chocolate City and before they did Magic Mike 2. You know, I heard all the women complaining that there was no soul, no real soul in the first Magic Mike, so I sat down and wrote Ladies' Night, and the book did very well. And, you know, people are still buying it. Actually, with the new book coming out, a lot more people are going back that, that are just finding out that I'm an author, and they're going back and buying Ladies' Night and loving Ladies' Night. So, um, it just, you know, Carl, was, you know, my publisher, he blessed me with that situation, and that was, you know, that was huge, because you never know, you know when God's going to open a door like mm-hmm. that, and he did. And so now I'm Chopping my way through my third book, and I've already outlined my fourth, so I'm going to keep going with that, and you, you know, keep creating it. And each one of these is, already has the script written or the television show written. So once the book does well, I can sit down with any network or any studio and say, "Hey, you know, the book did really well. Here's the script. Here's some people I have attached that want to do it. Let's go shoot this thing." Yeah, I was going to say, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like it's going to turn itself into a film of some sort. And Carl is definitely a great author. He's been on my show, ooh, might have been almost 10 years ago that I've, I've spoken with him. So it's been a while. But I want to say congratulations to you and all of your endeavors. But I do have this question for you, Christian, because you, mm-hmm. are, you are a very nice man. You know, just meeting you in person, you're very humble. Thank you. And, and, you're, Thank you. and you're very handsome and you work in this industry. And do you find it difficult like women in this industry who are attractive to find people who want you for you and not just for your good looks. Is that a problem for you sometimes? It's a problem because you never know someone's intention. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you know, they'll pretend to want to do business with you when in reality it's more of a personal thing or, Mm -hmm. or a personal interest. And that's fine. Human beings are attracted to other people. But where the problem lies is that you can't take it out on somebody or you know, try to shame them or make them feel bad because the interest isn't reciprocated Mm -hmm. because they aren't attracted to you in that way as well, especially if they're nothing but respectful. Like recently I had somebody who I've done business with before and because I wasn't attracted to her in that way and she kind of crossed the line and started sending text messages that weren't appropriate and, um, you know, just she started crossing the line in a a few different ways and... If that was somebody I was dating, you know, I'd be okay with that, you know, but if we're just strictly business, then it needs to stay strictly business. Mm-hmm. And because I kind of backed her off and was like, you know, I prefer, you know, you deal with my 
my manager, you know, with details pertaining to any business we do in the future, she got an attitude and all of a sudden started, you know, talking on blogs and talking on the internet, talking about I'm rude and I have bad character and, and all of this just because I didn't like her back. And that's, you know, and it's, it's a shame you have to deal with that. And then I had to go on, you know, Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and explain what, what really happened so everyone would know because I had people coming on my page talking about I heard what you did to such and such. No, I didn't do anything to her, but respectfully, you know, try to keep some distance because she had already started being inappropriate and out of, out of the box, you know. So um, it happens. It's unfortunate, but when it happens, you just have to deal with it the right way. And thankfully, I dealt with it the right way, and I didn't. You know, I didn't lose any fans who were really there to be there for me. If I, if I lost a couple fans because of some gossip that they heard, then it's only because of some gossip that they heard, and they were never genuine fans to begin with. If somebody's well-manufactured lie can, can get you to not want to support my brand and to think that I do, then, you know, I, I don't need you around it anyway. Right, because I, I think if people really got a chance to probably really know you and, and meet you, you know what I mean, you could feel that you are very genuine. You know what I mean? Right. God bless you with the looks that you have, but you can tell you you carry them because you know who gave them to you, but you are a, a professional. You know, and I got Thank that from you. you from when you were on my show before and when I met you in person, you are just a yeah. professional who just so happened to be blessed with good looks. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so I want well, to thank ahead. you. You're welcome. But I actually just said thank you. And so uh, I just again, I just want to thank you so much for coming on the show. And I want to remind the viewing audience and the listening audience, Saints and Sinners is going to be airing this Sunday, March the 6th at 9 p.m. on Bounce TV. You're going to get a chance to check out Christian Keys in action. So glad to see you back on TV doing some great stuff. And again, congratulations. And make sure you go pick up his novel, Dr. Feel Good, in stores everywhere. Again, thank you so much, Christian, for coming on the show. Thank you guys for having me. You know, I love you all over there. So thank you for the continued love and support. And I hope everybody tunes in. Saints and Sinners loves it this weekend, Sunday evening on Bounce. And then, you know, if you're a reader, if you love to read, you don't want to miss out on Dr. Bill Griffith. Go grab that. <laughs>